Hey guys, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm doing a different type of video today. I haven't ever done one of these, but I always find these so interesting to watch on other people's channels. So I thought I would try this and see how it works. So you guys have probably known how much I'm now into fountain pens, another rabbit hole to go down. But I thought just to make sure that I'm properly using all the pens that I have, but also using all the inks that I have, I'm gonna keep track of what I currently have inked. And there's actually three different places that I keep track of it. First, I have it in my Midori A6, so it's got the Midori paper in here. The second place is actually in this week size notebook that I got from Hobonichi, so it's got the Tomo River paper in it. And then the third place I actually keep track of it is in my Hobonichi Cousin, where I keep track of it actually in the uh, daily pages under the January or the monthly currently page. So I'm going to take you through what I currently have inked for the month of February and we'll go from there. The first pen I have inked for the month of February is the Across Botanica Green Daylily and this was the first fountain pen that I ever got um, from my dad actually and I don't know the nib size of it and I do believe it's a bit more broad than pretty much anything else that I have but I do believe this is a steel nib and I find that this writes actually quite smooth. So I currently have this inked up with Jean Herbin uh, Rui d'Ancre and it's a sample that I got from GouletPens.com. And I chose this particular pen for this ink because I normally find J. Herbon inks quite dry. Ugh, J. <laughs> Green Daylily. And I don't know if that's a fine or a medium, but I, I feel like it's either a fine or a medium, I'm not sure. But I decided to use this pen with it because it is one of my more broad ones and it does write quite smooth and uh, wet. And it's got like a nice kind of coral color to it. So that is Jean Herbon Rue d'Ancre. If you know how to say it properly, please let me know. Um, I do like the look of it. It seems to dry a little bit lighter, more pinky. So doing the sample of the Cross Botanica again, and this time in my Hobonichi notebook. And I find that this feels wetter on this paper. I wouldn't put this ink in a finer nib than this one. I think so. The next is my Sailor Pro Gear Slim in Dragon Palace. Um, this was, I think, my second gold nib pen, and I absolutely love it, and I do love the size of it as well. I can post this one quite easily. So this one currently has, I have a full bottle of it because it's so pretty, Sailor Ink Studio 1, 2, 3. And I love this ink because you don't actually know... what color are you gonna get this ink is really light though so i don't necessarily think everybody would like this but i love the shading of it and you'll see the difference in the hobonichi tomo river paper and this is in a medium fine nib and i currently have sailor ink studio one two three and it's funny, on this Midori paper, it feels a little dry, but on the Hobonichi paper, I absolutely love it. Now let's also do the sample for the Sailor Pro Gear. So this has Sailor Ink Studio 1, 2, 3. And I absolutely love the shading of the Sailor inks because if you even look at the Hobonichi paper versus the Midori paper, they look different. Like this has more of like the grays and the purple coming out. This looks more just gray. So I love the differences when you compare them across the different papers. 
So the next pen I also have here is my, I guess, is this the newest one? This is the second newest pen acquisition. I bought this back in November. This is, I think, a Sailor 1911, and it's in the white rose gold, so it's just all white along the body, and then the details are all rose gold, and it has a 21 karat nib that is rose gold. I don't normally post it, but it's actually not too bad posted. And what I currently have in here is Sailor Manyo Kuzu, which I also got as a sample from Goulet Pens. I got some of like the Sailor 237 on it when it leaked. And this is again in a medium fine nib. I normally like with Sailors medium fine, and then you'll see with the Pilots, I normally like fine nib, so because my writing is so small. And then trying it on the Hobonichi paper. All right. Like you notice just a difference in the flow just from the different papers. The ink seems to come out more wet on the Hobonichi paper. And I just love the shading that you get with this. Like you can go from the really light to the really dark and it's like burgundy purple and you don't know which way it's going to go, but I love the way that it looks. So then moving on to my Pilot. This is my Pilot Kakuno or Kakuno, I'm not sure how you want to pronounce it, but I bought this one off of Amazon and it originally had a fine nib, but I swapped it for a um, extra fine nib that a clear, that I had on a clear Pilot Kakuno. Uh, and, um, the main reason that I use this, and now I've got ink all over my fingers, is that I use this with my Noodler's inks. And these Noodler's inks I find very wet. And depending on the type of paper you use, I need a really, like, a very fine nib. Um, otherwise, I feel like it, the ink is just too wet and it just is um, too much for the paper. It just sucks up too much of the, the ink, but also it makes, like, my fine nibs seem medium or broad. So I only use this pen for my Noodler's Borealis Black or Noodler's Lexington Gray. So you can see how wet that is, but how fine this particular, ooh, I still can see how fine this particular nib is. Now this one was really scratchy when I first got it. So with some of my own tuning and trying to clean it um, between the tines, it's now at a place that I don't mind using it. The Noodler's inks are the only ones that I will use in here, and this one will always be inked up with either Borealis Black or Lexington Gray. So moving to the Hobonichi paper, or the Tomo River paper in the Hobonichi notebook. There's no shading in that, it's just a very good basic black. But I bought this ink before I did a ton of research on inks and I kind of wish I didn't buy it but I actually don't mind it now that I have the pen that I want to use in it and I mean look at how just the Tomo River paper is different from the Midori paper it looks more fine on here whereas here it's not and I don't know if that's the pen or the paper but just the difference in the two papers is astounding to me. And then lastly, my Pilot Vanishing Point. I bought this in November. This was my most recent or my last pen purchase. I say my most recent, but that's wrong because I just bought something yesterday. Um, but this is my the most, the last one that came in, the newest one I have. And I absolutely love this. It is a bit weightier 
than the Decimo and it's a bit wider as well and I, I like it more in the grip. And this is the pen that I will be using in my five year journal. So with my five year journal for the Hobonichi, I am planning to use just one pen and one ink for that whole month and then changing it every month. And then at the back, I will be at the back, I'll be able to keep track of the pens and inks that I've used and that way I'm making a good round of all the pens and making sure that all of the pens are being used. So, so my Pilot Vanishing Point currently has, where is it, a sample of Pilot Iroshizuku Suji, which I got from Wonder Pens here in Canada. I have so many samples, but then you should see the amount of bottles I currently have right now. But I'm trying to really work my way through my ink stash before I buy any more. So, Pilot, Vanishing Point, and I have this in a fine, because I do generally have small writing, and it has Pilot, Hiroshizuku Tsutsuji. So you can see kind of the theme that I've gone here. There's some pinks, a dark, a dark burgundy, I guess, and then a pink here. And this one will mostly be for my five-year journal. And then the rest, I tried to find inks that would go along with the stickers that I plan on using in my planners this month. So I tried to get it to match as much as possible. What's interesting about this ink is that it goes down pink, but then it's got this incredible red sheen to it that it kind of looks red once it dries. And I feel like you can really see that on the Tamo River paper. Yeah, you can uh, really see how that's kind of drying around. I'll bring it closer to the camera. So you can see how it's kind of pink when wet, but then kind of has that little bit of red sheen to it. Love that ink. It'll be so great in my five-year journal. So those are my currently inked for the month of February. And I think it'll be really good for me to keep this ink journal so that I make sure I'm going through all of my inks that I have purchased, but also making sure that I'm getting a good use of my pens. I did try at one point to have all of my pens inked and it was just too much for me. So I think sticking to like five and making sure that I'm changing up the pens every month will make sure that I am getting good use out of all of my pens. All right, but that is it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have fountain pens, what you have inked down below, or what is your favorite out of all of these and what pen ink paper combination is your favorite. Thank you guys so much for watching and have yourselves a great day.